Well, I'm back with another repair job. This one, I'm hoping, is going to be an easy one. A uh, friend of mine I was having some drinks with this afternoon dropped this off to me. And he said, uh, my favourite little torch, and I wonder if you can get it going again. So I thought, this might be a good opportunity to pull something apart, and I pulled it apart on the front end first. And all this junk fell out, and I saw this. Let's see if we can go up a little closer here. And clearly some batteries have leaked. I think he did confess that to me. There's also, there's a little bit of corrosion inside the switch cap, which I'm not sure is working. And inside all of this, there is another section as well. There's also, if we look inside here, I'm not sure if you can see here, there is some corrosion. Let me see if I can get a bit of light source here. After I throw it on the floor. Right. Let's get some better light into this. Okay, can we see corrosion in here? There's a whole bunch of it right there. And there's a bit more there. And normally that shouldn't stop it functioning, but it is an indicator of what was with this. And what was, was probably dead batteries. Now I've had a bit of a squeeze in here, and there's pretty much just a resistor in series with a little tiny cob LED and some wire so that circuit board is mostly just a contact ring so I think the first thing we're going to do is get some electronic circuit board cleaner and a couple of JCAR special alkaline batteries from my local JCAR dealer and we'll see what we can do and I might even stick it down to my blue tack snail because yeah, you know we, we have fun when my apprentice is here all right let's see how we go so of course the first order of duty is to squash the snail into a submission and we'll get this tail switch here get my cheap little multimeter because my good one's in the car where it should live let's see if we've got some switch contacts here nothing on the switch we'll cycle the switch and you don't appear to have any continuity on the switch but i'm also on the wrong range let's try a diode check so that appears to be a dead short and oh, that appears to be an open circuit. Let's just repeat that just in case. Yep. And okay, so let's just give this a quick squirt of contact cleaner over my bench and we'll give it a quick scrub with my toothbrush with shortened teeth in here just to get some of that corrosion out and clean the threads up a little bit. Just tip it into a bucket over the side here. Right, that can stay off to the side and get clean. Now this, we really want to have a bit of a look at. We want to stick it into the blue tech and just lift gently, and that will get our cob unit out of here. Now, this is interesting. I can probably, if I'm lucky, seems to be some little pins here. I can remove this plastic shroud, put that to one side. So we see here now, what I thought was just a resistor is actually a little uh, voltage regulator circuit with a little inductor there presumably on a ceramic core. Well, I'm going to give this a clean up and I might give it three volts from the power supply and see what happens. But right for now, I'm going to give it a bit of contact cleaner and give it a good little scrub. If my fingers don't get in the way, I'm sorry. That's not cleaning that up very well. I might give that a scrub with some very fine sandpaper and we'll come back to this. Alright, so uh, I've given this a clean up with some 1500 grit paper and you can see hopefully fairly closely up there and I've just folded that inductor out of the way and I've given the circuit a little bit of a clean up at the back there and now uh, that's the cob LED module if I didn't show it earlier so what we're going to do here and if you can see my multimeter here I'm going to dial up around about three volts here on the variable supply we'll bring it back a bit I need a fine adjustment we have a separate knob for fine no we don't this is my older supply, uh, donated by another good friend of mine, from the same group of people in fact. Alright, so now we have 3 volts. Now looking at the position of this contact, I'm going to back it in that positive's on the middle. So let's hook negative up to this outer ring, and hopefully we're not touching any of the through plates. We'll lift this LED module up and we'll have a look see what happens well okay we have some life Whoop. 
so the LED works and let's see how much current it's pulling just for just for the sake of it so we are pulling slightly less than half an amp which is not too bad that's a fairly nicely rated one okay let's get this meter out of the way slightly so we know that the switch works we know that the LED works so it's probably just contact and I'm thinking this spring here is probably the key to the problem so we'll give everything else a little bit of a clean out and we'll go from there we'll put some contact cleaner in here this is anodized aluminium so we might be lucky with my shortened brush toothbrush or shortened bristle toothbrush rather I'm putting a bit of force into this normally if I was going to do this properly I'd soak it for a couple of days in vinegar all right so I've had a good look over everything let's uh, just do a part check here so a reflector looks good and I've just disassembled that and checked it we know that our switch is good it feels a little grindy after I've put some contact cleaner in there so we may put that aside and oil that we know that this unit works the spring looks good and I think that's the key to our problems that bit can be reassembled clean this really as best I can without really running some sandpaper through it so I'm going to leave that as is for now don't expect that to go too much further the head looks very good and we know our batteries work so I'll pretty much I might pop the rubber cap out of this and um, or even the little seal out of here we'll see what we can do and uh, try and lube that switch up Get a fairly close look at this switch and I don't think there's much I can do to actually get into it without causing any damage and uh, you know if it's not broken don't fix it is really what I reckon is the case in here so I'm going to take a little bit of sewing machine oil just put a single drop right down the middle here if I can do this just right this stuff's a very thin oil and it's got quite a knack for wicking its way into things I'm hoping that it's open enough in there that it'll get into the contacts without too much of a problem and it should help to hopefully control um, some of the corrosion in there as well I'm not sure if you can hear this we'll click it near the microphone here it's starting to feel better as we go now you do need to be careful some of these oils will actually cause some of that rubber to uh, dissolve but I've had good experience with the Singer sewing machine oil because some of the sewing machines use rubber belts as well so it tends to be fairly good on it all right I think it's time we reassembled and I'm going to jump to the assembly stage because I need to concentrate and uh, we'll see how we go from there I was just about to assemble things and I thought I might just do one last step I'm pretty sure this little copper pad is going to corrode up again regardless of what I do I thought the best contact I'm going to build up a little bit of solder here I'm going to just use some of this very fine solder here that's flux core and I can see there is some oxidization still on there so I'm just going to try and build a nice little smooth pad there I'll wait till that cools off a bit and I'll clean the flux off once I'm done and because this bit meets the rim and there's some through plating there as well it's going to build this rim up a little bit largely because I know there's a spring under it and the spring should hold some tension against this little lip and this means I can then replenish that or sand it down and I'll find that solder is a little more immune to corrosion than copper so by tinning it like this and that phrase comes from the fact that solder is about 60% tin um, by tinning it we're helping reduce the corrosion a little bit and that looks very good I'll just clean the iron here I'll just give this a some contact cleaner it was still a little bit hot apparently a quick scrub okay that looks good I think it's time to reassemble Mr. Snaily is a bit messed up but we'll build him again and he's a bit slimy from the contact cleaner let's get a fresh bit while Mr. Staley sn Staley snail I wouldn't make a very good phrase artist I don't know what's the word for that anyway I'm talking gibberish whilst I clean this up don't mind that let's assemble and put this all back together again presumably in the correct order 
and while I'm over here I'll turn my soldering iron off. Right, so I doubt I'll need it again unless I do something silly and break a wire. There's only two to break, so here's my luck. Alright, there's the plastic locator rings, look like they're back in position. There's our module. So let's put our, how do we do this, our module slots into here I believe. Um, oh, no, wait a minute. It looks like that spring goes in the head. That bit goes in there to make contact with the spring. We spoke about that earlier. And we'll just get the last little bit of junk off the top there. Just wipe that off. Let's put our reflector back on. Whoa, it's a bit slippery now. Put the shaft back on. Oh my. And two LEDs. Oh, <laughs> two batteries. <laughs> Put that back in. And if we're lucky, this should work. Haha! -ha, it's alive again. I like when I have successful experiments like that. Well, he'll be happy. I'll drop that off to him tomorrow. In any case, this has been a short one, but I hope it's an enjoyable one nonetheless.